David just sent out a post a few days ago about, you know, nothing will satisfy you in this world and the feeling of home will continue to haunt you. And that's what I have been feeling, like there is a feeling that has been haunting me. And at the beginning, because I was brought up as an atheist and it didn't come to me clearly as a, f a longing for God, at the very beginning, I always had this very strong um, desire to come to the United States. That's the, the home feeling that's haunting me in my mind. And that's something that is very concrete, is a location that I'm longing for. And so, so I, you know, many, many years that it, I went to Australia, moved to Australia first, and then I got an opportunity to come to the United States and to study in Chicago and uh, was going to get a job here to settle down. And I thought, this is not it. Why have I been feeling this desire to come when this is not it? So, so I just decided at that point that I would drop all this, you know, whatever fantasy that I had. And I went back to Australia. And that was the end of this desire for location in the world. I just went back to Australia and thinking, you know, what now? Suddenly, oh, my dream just got shattered. I didn't really understand why I had been wanting to come to the United States all these years. And then at that point, I actually was pondering whether Australia was the place for me or should I go back to my home country, which was China, or anywhere else in the world. And I heard this loud voice, stay here. Stay, there is something big gonna happen. And it was so obvious, it's almost like, now when I think of it, it's almost like an airplane that you can hear is coming, but you haven't seen it. And it's that obvious, like I could feel something is coming. I could feel it, I, I could hear it, I could feel it, I haven't seen it. And, and I waited for five years for that thing to come, and that was David. Actually, I realized maybe it was this, the same year that you visit Australia for the first time and when I moved there. But it took five years for my awareness to open up for I actually went to your retreat. And then that haunting, that, that feeling of hung, being haunted started to uh, be clear that it was a feeling you know, for something that is not of the world. It's almost like a, a feeling of coming home of for, uh, look, going back to God. And that was, you know, a spiritual path seems that I felt, okay, that's, that's my home, that's, you know, that's my destination. And so eventually, I, now I'm here in the United States. It's almost like a circle. It's not a location, it's not even a spiritual path. Now, after I got here, it's all about coming inward like almost like this book, um, The Alchemist, that he traveled around the world and found the treasure is in his backyard, is, is at his home. And that's what I'm feeling like when I got here. And I love this, um, some, I think some saint say, said that, you know, if you really want to know room, you gotta have to go into the room, lock the door and throw the key away to really, explore what's inside and that's what I feel that you know people come here and we throw the key away to go inside because this is the last place we want to go we try actually every single method to to not go inside <laughs> but after you know looking everywhere for treasures now you know we we sort of sense okay it's here and that's just lock the doors throw out all options and and just really come down to find the treasure inside. And that's that's you know, I just realized also another thing with living in this life, if I can really summarize and put it in words, um, I would say it is a life of no exceptions and you know, use use the you know, the, the term in the course because we don't have exceptions when we apply 
the principles of the course anymore. Everything is exactly the same. Every single project, every person, every comments, every thoughts is the same, and we have to look at everything exactly the same way. That is to hand it over to the spirit and allow the, sh the light to shine on it so we can see it with the light. And or another, another term, if I can say, would be bring the illusion to truth instead of bring truth to illusion. And that's what I used to do when I was having Course Miracle uh, groups in Sydney, which was to, you know, and I think that's probably a good start because we still wanted to have a good life in the world and a spiritual path could be a possible solution after we try out every single solution in the world. So we wanted to have these spiritual principles so that we can improve our life. I can improve my health. I can improve my relationship. But really now, here we're really looking at, you know, we bring the illusion of a personal relationship, the illusion of a sickness in the body, and, you know, every single illusion to the light to be reinterpreted and to not even assume that we know what this is about. So that is. I would say a summary of what I have been doing and what everybody has been doing here, day in and day out. So I just want to welcome you to come to our family. <laughs> and really, I just think, because I started as a volunteer, and I just want to taste what it feels like to really live the principle. Because I remember when Jason, I first met Jason in Australia, he said to me, because I was talking about the, the course theories, very, you know, I can just articulate the, the theories, metaphys metaphysically ghosting everything. And he just very gently said to me, well, we really talk from experience. It's, it's the best to talk from experience. Have you had any experience? And I thought, you know, at that moment, I almost have this, I hard how could be experience? Like, yes. No, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but now it is, it is, I have experience and I have experience and all the insights come from the experience. It really doesn't matter about the words because we all feel each other energetically. You know, it's not, we don't listen to the words anymore. And that's, you know, we can taste the truth. We, we are the truth. So I, I don't really have a lot more to say. I just feel like it was just great honor for me to come here at the beginning, be a volunteer, and really throw myself into this and give everything to really experience what the Course teaching. And I, I was very determined to prove it for myself, whether it's true or not. The experience that we're talking about is not localized, so it's not about a place. I know I've been in all these countries, a lot of the countries I go to, I don't even speak the languages and, and I just have seen thousands of witnesses of happy, joyful people. You know, the, this world is just a call to witnesses of what we believe, so I've seen so many thousands and thousands and it's all been part of my mind training and my healing. It, it's, it's such a glorious life that we laugh all day, like today I was looking, doing something on the internet and one of these headlines came on and it's, uh, the headline was, Kate Winslet has ticket to space. So we were laughing, we were talking about it and it was like, Kate, she's got such a great life, you know, Leonardo and the Titanic and all those great movies and now she's going to space, I mean, my God, you know. We were talking about it, we were all rejoicing and everything, and, and we were saying, what a great life, what a great life, and then you said, you said, that's my life. I love my life. I, love my life. I mean, that's how spectacular our lives are in forgiveness, in following our joy, in following the Holy Spirit, in following intuition. You know, if I had a little bird that I could have recorded all these different encounters I've had in all these different countries, it is spectacular. Maybe even that's, that's too small of a word for it. 
because it we are God's will for us is perfect happiness and when we give ourselves over to listening and following and going with that joy it just gets more joyful more gleeful more spectacular as we go along we have new vistas of mind that open up and we see how powerful our mind is and we see everything as a reflection of our mind and so you know that's part of it I think mostly you know you don't really teach with the words but if if even the parables of some of the things that that we've gone through inspires just a little spark of "Ooh, that sounds good or, oh I want more of that or whatever then it has served its purpose because what that's all we can really do is inspire we can't really teach anybody else we can't convince anybody there's really nothing to change in the world it's not we're, we're not trying to grow anything or make anything or make anything bigger or better or more wonderful it's just wanting that experience more than anything else and trusting that all of the darkness has to come up and be brought to the light and willing being willing to make no exceptions day to day to day moment by moment it's fun to live an uncompromising life it's it's fun to be transparent you start to see there's no secrets to hide you've been playing hide-and-seek with your Christ self all, all along and now it's like the game it's time for the game to be over